Now, as gunshots echo across the windswept, snow-covered reaches of the wild northwest, Quaker-puffed wheat and Quaker-puffed rice, the breakfast cereal shot from guns, present the challenge of the Yukon. It's Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog of the Northwest, blazing the trail for Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police in his relentless pursuit of lawbreakers. And King, on the Gold, gold discovered in the Yukon. A, a stampede to the, the Klondike in the wild race for riches. Back to the days of the gold rush with Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice bringing you the adventures of Sergeant Preston and his wonder dog, Yukon King, as they meet the challenge of the Yukon. You can tell by the stars. Yes, follow the breakfast tip of many a top action Hollywood movie star. Eat a heaping bowlful of nourishing, delicious Quaker popped wheat or Quaker popped rice topped with milk or cream and fruit. Wheat or rice shot from guns furnishes extra health values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Yes, sirree, they're good for you. And so swell tasting they can't be beat. So latch on to delicious Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. The nourishing, ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from guns. The sergeant stopped his team at the foot of the hill, and with only King at his side, climbed to the top. It was only four o'clock in the afternoon. But it was already dark. At the crest of the hill, the sergeant dropped to the ground. On the far side of the valley, he could see the Indian village lit by a great bonfire. And around the fire, a circle of leaping shadows. No, I don't like it either, King. Is that what we've heard is true. Miyako's out to make trouble. There looks to be more than a hundred braves with guns. There's no telling what might happen. It's a bigger job for us, though, King. This calls for troops. Get back to Dawson as fast as we can. Should make it by morning. Come on, boy. At the bottom of the hill, the sergeant turned his sled around and then headed down the creek in the direction of the Yukon. On King! On the Two hours later, they reached Chet Bradley's trading post and roadhouse on the banks of the river. Okay, hurry, Huskies, hurry! Yeah, hello. That you, Chet? Yeah. Oh, it's you, Sergeant. Welcome, welcome. I won't be so welcome when you hear my news. Can I get some hot food for the dogs? Of course, I'm just ready to feed Moon. Yeah, what's the news? The Miyako. The wind's in the wrong direction, or you'd hear the drums. What drums? Yes. He's getting ready to stage a small rebellion. Then that explains it. Explains what? Joe and Tagish, my Indians. They've disappeared. You all alone here? Except for Dark Campbell. He's stopping for the night. He won't be much help. Into the run, boys. Go on, Tom. Go on. I'll have your food in a minute. You can come with me, King. Well, perhaps Doc's sober. Well, that's a little too much to expect. <laughs> he isn't bad. Well, he'll have to lend us a hand. Do you think Miyako will attack here? He may. If he doesn't do it tonight, though, he won't have the chance. I'm on my way to Dawson for the troops. Good. But you'll have to be prepared to defend yourself, Chet. Miyako needs guns, and you have them. I'll help you board up all your windows before I leave. We'll leave enough room to shoot through, and that's all. Too bad you don't have a lot of travelers stopping here tonight. Yep, there's only dark. The stew will be ready for the dogs in a minute. Well, well, if it isn't the illustrious Sergeant Preston... Uh, you join me in a drink? No, I won't, and you're not going to join yourself either. We have work to do. Sergeant, I'm a paying guest. Perhaps you'd like to be a dead guest. What's that? He's serious, Doc. Miyaku's on the warpath. He may start here. Or perhaps you'd rather hit the trail instead of staying. Nonsense. Nothing I'd like better than a good fight. Die like a hero. Remember the Alamo, <laughs> all the rest of it. Oh, it shouldn't be that bad, Doc. I was just exaggerating to make an impression on you. Mm. The Indians can only have a few guns. With a little work, we can turn this place into a fort. 
Even if they do attack, you should be able to hold them off, and I'll be back with some troops by tomorrow night. <clears throat> You're going on to Dawson tonight? Just as soon as my team's fed and rested. Well, let's go. We'll take care of them right now. As soon as the dogs were fed, the sergeant, Chet, and Doc went to work and boarded up the windows. When they had finished... You have plenty of ammunition? Yep. It's all here in back of the counter. Uh, rifles, too. Oh, uh, make mine a Winchester. <laughs> That's a strange preference for me. Try to stick to it for the evening. This case is open. I sold one the day before. What the... What's the matter? Empty. Hey, Sergeant, there's one case missing. Joe and Tagish must have taken them. And now Miyaku has them. How many? Twenty. What about ammunition? There's a lot of that missing, too. That changes things. It sure does. Of course, it could mean they won't come here at all. They already have rifles, I mean. But it's the nearest trading post. They may want more rifles and food. We're on the Yukon Trail. Lots of travel. Yaku might prefer to hit some place. It's a little more isolated. Wait, listen. Someone just drove up. <clears throat> Reinforcements for the garrison. Good. I hope you have plenty of guests tonight, Chet. I'll feel better about leaving. Chet? It's Grant Monroe. Hey, Grant. Can you give me a hand? With your dogs? Since when do you need any help on harnessing a team? Not with the team. I've got a girl on the sled. She's sick. Oh, a girl? Oh, what's the matter with her? I don't know, but it's bad. Help me carry her in. I'll do it, Grant. All right, Sergeant. Who is she? Her name's Ann Sheldon. She's a nurse. Oh, really? On her way to the hospital in Dawson. She's got a lot of medical supplies and stuff with her. She hired me in Whitehorse. Look at her, Sergeant. She's passed out cold. She isn't heavy, Grant. I'll carry her. She was all right this morning, but when we stopped to eat this noon, she wasn't hungry. And now look at her. Yes. In my room, Sergeant. It's warm. It's this way. There. Let's let this park off. Here's some blankets. Hmm. Her forehead is hot. High fever. Doc, are you really a doctor? No. Oh, too bad. What's her name, Grant? Ann Sheldon. What? She's a nurse. <laughs> Sheldon. What's so funny? <laughs> nothing, nothing at all. I knew a Dr. Sheldon in San Francisco years ago. She looks like him. Might be his daughter. She's a great gal, Doc. Regular. You know, they've had a lot of diphtheria in White Horse, and she's been up night and day nursing people. Diphtheria, Grant? Yeah. <laughs> well, you think... I don't know. I've no idea, but it's possible. She's finding it hard to breathe. Oh. There, she's coming, too. Doctor. Well, I'm sorry there's no doctor here. Where am I? Chet Bradley's roadhouse. Is there anything you want? Anything we can get you? So warm. Yes, you have a fever. I know. My throat, I must have it. Diphtheria? Yes. All the symptoms. You're wearing a uniform. Sergeant Preston, Northwest Mounted. Of course. Sergeant, on the sled, supplies for the Dawson Hospital. There's serum, the antitoxin, a hypodermic needle. Grant, come with me. Uh, what about the serum? There's some on your sled. I'll bring all the supplies in here, and then she can point out what we're supposed to use. I've seen it done. I suppose I can do it. Come on. The sled was unloaded. Anne pointed out the box containing the serum. In painful whispers, she directed the sterilizing of the hypodermic needle and the amount of serum to be placed in it. She gestured for her arm to be bared and pointed to the place where the needle should be inserted. Here? I think so. Uh, a little more to the right. Oh, you do know something about this, Doc. I've seen it done. That's it. Now. Is that all? Yes. If it isn't too late. I'm asleep. If you want anything, call. We'll be just outside. Thank you. Come on, Doc. Sergeant, uh, when you get to Dawson, you'll bring a doctor back with you. If there's one that can be spared, Chet, there's a lot of sickness in town. Somebody's got to come. I'll make them. I'm going up to Dawson, Sergeant. I can't do anything here, and I feel responsible. We can use you here. Miyaku may attack tonight. Miyaku? Indians are on the warpath. Then I've got to get her out of here. If you try to move her, she'll die. Listen to King. Listen to the dogs outside. What's the matter, boy? I don't like the sound of that growl. I'll put out the lamp, Chet. I'll see what's going on outside. See anything? Shadows. Hand me a rifle, Grant. They're on the counter. Hey, this one. It's loaded. Thanks. We'll see what a shot does. 
Indians. Neither you nor I are going to Dawson tonight, Grant. The Aku has the place surrounded. We'll continue our adventure in just a moment. Partner, what goes on here? Yahoo! I'm a rootin' tootin' cowhand, that's what. So I see. L look like one, too. Judging from that ten-gallon hat, chaps, boots, spurs, and all. But look, mister, just you put up those shooting irons of yours and calm down. Fell ought to know better than to go around waving a pair of six-shooters. Oh, no, you're right, dead right. But say, these are just pea-shooters. For real excitement, let me tell you about the kind of gun that gives me a bigger kick than a Longhorn Texas steer. Oh? Mister, I'm talking about a gun that's got them all beat. Partner, that's the gun that shoots Quaker puffed rice and Quaker puffed wheat. Oh, you're telling me. Yes, sir. A fella with any zip and go to him needs to stow away a He-Man breakfast. Now you're talking... And Quaker popped rice or Quaker popped wheat fills the bill for you, huh? <laughs> Does it ever? Just pour on the old milk and cream, add your favorite fruit, and you know what? What? There's no beating this eating. That's what. <laughs> well, sir, fellas and girls, that's a mighty good tip. So tomorrow morning, be sure to get the drop on a really swell tasting breakfast. Eat Quaker popped rice yeah. or Quaker popped wheat. The ready-to-serve breakfast cereals shot from gun. Yes, Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat are shot from guns, actually exploded up to eight times normal size to make them crisp and tender, bigger and better tasting. Important, too, wheat or rice shot from guns is good for you. Both delicious kinds furnish extra food values of restored natural grain amounts of vitamin B1, niacin, and iron. Man, oh man, don't miss out another day. Say to mom, from now on, I want to eat Quaker popped rice and Quaker popped wheat. Now to continue. After the Indians' first volley, the night became quiet once more and the four men in the post took advantage of the lull to prepare for a siege. You'd better take one of these front windows, Doc. It's open ground. You won't have to shoot so fast. Oh, I'm all right. Sergeant, how about me making a break for it? You wouldn't have a chance, Grant. No, there's only one of us who could possibly get away. Why you more than me? Not me. King. I'm going to light the lamp again, Jet. I'll write a note to the inspector. And King will take it to him? If I tell him headquarters, he'll know where to go. Oh, Chad, you'd better get out in the kitchen, Miyak, who can see we're ready for him. If he tries to rush the place, it'll be in back, but they'll have the cover of the trees. Right, I'll keep a look out. What are you saying, Sergeant? Asking the inspector to get in touch with Major Walsh and send the troops up here. Yukon Trail's hard packed. They can ride this far. Bring snowshoes if they have to follow Miyaku into the forest. Oh, don't forget the doctor. I won't. Why, it'll be tomorrow afternoon before he can get here. If the serum doesn't work, he won't be needed. You mean she'll die? Diphtheria, bullets, maybe we'll all die. No great loss in some cases. Hicking. I want you to take this to headquarters. Understand, boy? Headquarters. Better leave by the back way, King. Come on. See anything, Chad? No, it's too dark. Let's hope they don't see King. You're opening the door now. That's right. Quiet, boy. Go to it. Headquarters. Gone into the trees. They'll keep to the woods until he gets past them. No sound. He's making it. No. King boy. What if they got him? All we can do is hope they didn't. Sergeant, here they come. Let them have it. For the next 15 minutes, the sergeant and Chet fired steadily at the menacing shadows, creeping closer and closer to the post. Finally, they began to withdraw, and the defenders of the post had another their breathing space. Uh, can't see anything at all now. Think they've gone away? They haven't gone far. No, Chet. Miyaku doesn't give up that easily. Sergeant was right. The renegade chief refused to give up, and all through the night he led attack after attack, 
hoping for a moment when the defenders of the post would relax their vigilance. Once toward morning, the Indians charged across the open ground and back of the post. Accurate shot from Chet and the sergeant stopped the first two braves, and the others faltered. Miyako urged them on from the shelter of the trees, but they turned and ran. The two Indians who had been wounded started to crawl toward cover. Chet and the sergeant held their fire. Yeah, it's all over. For a little while, I mean. They might give us a rest now. It's getting late. You need some sleep, Chet. Yeah, so do you. I'll see how the others are making out. How's it going, Doc? Why, you and Chet have been doing all the work. Yeah, how about taking your place? We can all take it easy for a while, I think. What's that? It's the girl. Sergeant, what's happening to her? She can't seem to breathe right. No, the membrane's forming. Huh? What does that mean? In her throat, when it closes completely, well, that's the end. Isn't there something we can do? Nothing. And her father's to blame. Her father? Dr. Alan Sheldon, the head of the hospital where I was a resident. I might still be a doctor if it hadn't been for him. I can still remember the last words he spoke to me. Criminal negligence, Dr. Campbell. You'd been drinking, and that's why the patient died. He said, I'll see to it that you never operate again. He saw to it, all right. Then you are a doctor. I was a doctor. Is there anything you can do to save this girl's life? There's an operation that could be performed. A tracheotomy. One cuts into the windpipe and inserts a tube. These supplies here, is there everything that's needed? The instruments and the tube you speak of? Yes, of course. These supplies were made up to take care of the Dawson Hospital in case there was a diphtheria epidemic there. It's obvious. Then if you have everything you need, you've got to perform the operation. Me? I wouldn't if I could. Why should I? Why should you? You'd stand by and let this girl die when there's something you can do to help her? That's murder. I've been called a murderer before by Dr. Alan Sheldon. Doc, listen to me. Once upon a time, you took an oath to help the sick. Sure, sure. In whatsoever houses I enter, I will enter to help the sick. And I will abstain from any intentional wrongdoing and harm. Doesn't that still mean anything to you? Yes, especially the last part. Now, if I carry out this oath and break it not, may I gain forever reputation among all men for my life and my art. But if I transgress it and forswear myself, may the opposite befall me. Well, that's what's happened to me. I've transgressed. I've forsworn. But you're being given another chance, don't you see that? It's too late. Why? Are you afraid? Of course I'm afraid. Do you think this hand could hold a scalpel? Get that box of surgical instruments, Grant. Uh, this one? Yes. What are you going to do? I'm opening the box. There's a scalpel. Pick it up. I, I can't. Doc, if you won't perform this operation, I shall. What? You can tell me where to cut and how deep. Your brain can use my hands. You dare? I dare anything to save this girl's life. I mean it, Doc. Use my hands. Wait, wait. There's no time to wait, is there? Let me take the scalpel. Here. Another chance, Doctor. Well? I won't borrow your hand, Sergeant. I'll borrow your courage. May God have mercy. The doctor bowed his head and then raised it high. He squared his shoulders. There was a new light in his eyes. Swiftly, he prepared for the operation. Only once did he hesitate, for the fraction of a second with his scalpel poised. His hand trembled. He watched it, concentrating his will. The hand steadied. He made the incision. Ten minutes later, it was all over, and Anne's features had relaxed. The terrible effort, the pain was gone. The life-giving air poured into her lungs. Well done, Doctor. She'll be all right now. Come out in the kitchen and have some coffee. Yes, coffee. It was light outside now, and the dogs were barking for their breakfast. Think, think we should take a chance on feeding them, Sergeant? I'll see what chance we have. No Indians around that I can make out. Don't show yourself, Sergeant. Only for a second. Oh, fine. No, Chet, the dogs will have to wait for their food. It was a long day of waiting. The men took turns sleeping, but always there were two of them standing guard, one in front and one in back. The light began to fail at three o'clock, 
and they made ready for another siege. There were unspoken questions in each of their minds. Had King managed to get away the night before? Had the sergeant's note reached headquarters? Was there help on the way? The answer was, not yet. One of the Indians' bullets had hit King, and though he paid no attention to the searing pain in his shoulder at first, there had come a time when the shoulder began to stiffen. Try as he might, it was impossible for him to keep up the fast pace he had set as he swung onto the Yukon Trail. He stopped for a moment and licked the wound, but then he started out again. He felt the pain now across his chest, and he knew that if he stopped for long, his shoulder would stiffen so badly he wouldn't be able to continue. He must. The sergeant had told him he must go to headquarters, and he had sensed the urgency in his master's voice. Nothing could stop him, but it was impossible to run, impossible even to put any weight on his left foreleg now. The hours of the night passed. The gray day dawned, and King hobbled on, his brain was no longer clear. He could only concentrate on the next painful step. With somewhere back in his mind, the thought of headquarters, the place he must reach to justify his master's faith in him. At five o'clock that afternoon, Constable Downey stopped leafing through a file of papers, yes. set them down, and started for the headquarters front door. Where are you going, Constable? I thought I heard a scratching noise. Yeah, some stray, probably. Hey, Inspector. What's the matter? It's King. He's been hurt. What is it, boy? Let me see. Here, here, I'll carry you over by the stove. He can't walk, Inspector. He can hardly move. There, boy. Uh, here, let me see. It's a bullet wound. Looks like it. Uh, there's a note in his collar. From the sergeant? Yes. Miyako's on the warpath. He surrounded Bradley's trading post. Hmm. How many men does he have? A hundred. At least 20 rifles. I'll tell Major Walsh. And a doctor they need. Well, I'll try the hospital. Take charge here, Constable. I don't know when I'll be back. Yes, sir. <laughs> a king, old fellow. All the way from Bradley's post. Must have been wounded just as you started out, but you wouldn't let anything stop you. <laughs> Message to Garcia. Well, I still now. Now wash that shoulder and bandage it. Good boy. Good old king. At the trading post that night, the little garrison found that Miyaku had changed his tactics. Hardly a shot was fired, but the Indians would creep as close as they could to the log building, and then a flaming pine torch would arch through the sky. Sometimes they fell short, but sometimes they would land on the roof. Yeah, there's another one. Good thing there's plenty of snow on the roof. It won't be for long. The torches are probably soaked in coal oil. Try to stop them from getting close enough to throw. As soon as they light a torch, shoot. I get you. There's one that won't set anything on fire. But the barrage of torches kept up, and at last a thread of smoke crept down from the roof. Smoldering, Chet. Yeah, we can't do anything about it till it burns a hole through. We can figure ways and means of getting out of here. What about surrendering? Not to Miyako. They'll expect us to come out this door because the woods are closer to it. Yes, the Indians are closer, too. I'm thinking about the girl. What happened to Grant's sled out in front? Uh, the team ran away when the shooting started. Huh? Wonder how fast I could make it to the closest run, the one my team's in. Not fast enough. I'm going to try it anyway. All I have to do is open the gate and they'll follow me back in here. Sergeant. Start shooting. Keep firing at the edge of the woods. I'm going. Sergeant opened the rear door and ran a few steps to the first rock. He threw open the gate. Come on, boy. Then he raced back into the post, the team after him. Made it. Quiet down, boys. Quiet. What for? Why did you want the team in here? Feed them first. You risked your life so they wouldn't go hungry? No, Chet. You have a sled and harness in the store. Uh, of course. Well, harness the team inside and put the girl on the sled. I'll go out the back way and draw the Indians fire. Then you open the front door and drive right out. Try to make a getaway. It's a chance for us, but not for you. It isn't a very good chance for anyone. Fifteen minutes later, the inside of the building was filled with smoke. And the sergeant decided there was no point in postponing their break. Anne was wrapped in blankets and placed on the sled in the store. The sergeant's team, fed and ready for the trail, was harnessed to it. And then... You understand, don't you? Give me a chance to draw their fire. Yes, sir. Right, sir. Good, I'll see you in Dawson. The sergeant started for the back of the building, but just as he turned... Hey, wait a minute. It's a bugle. Yes. And it's the troops. They're dismounting. They're going into the woods after the Indians. Come on, Chet. Let's lend a hand. I'm with you. 
As the Indians saw that a full company of soldiers had been sent against them, they lost all taste for fighting. Miyaku, their renegade leader, could not make them hold their ground. And when a bullet hit him, the troops only had to round up his followers. As the process was being completed, Major Walsh assigned to a squad to help the sergeant fight the smoldering fire on the trading post roof. The building was saved, and so it was inside the store that the sergeant reported to the inspector. Well, you've had quite a siege of it, Sergeant. What's been happening anyway, sir? Why did you want me to bring a doctor? This Campbell's extremely competent, it seems to me. Uh, Dr. Campbell didn't arrive until after I wrote my note. Oh, I see. You know, sir, I really expected you long before you got here. Well, we made good time. King didn't reach Dawson until uh, 5 o'clock yesterday afternoon. What? He was wounded. Oh. Oh, it must have been a tough trip for him. Is he all right now? Well, I think so. He will be anyway, just as soon as you pat his head and tell him that he did a good job. Well, if you don't mind, Inspector, I'll start back for Dawson right away. Go to it, Sergeant. And so it was only a few hours later that King felt the sergeant's hand on his head and the words that made all his pain worthwhile. <laughs> good work, boy. yaku has been captured, and with him in jail, the Indians won't make us any more trouble. And Sheldon's getting along very well. Dr. Campbell's going to work at the hospital here in Dawson. And, King, as soon as you're up and around again... Wait a minute. Not so fast. I didn't mean up, boy. Lie down. That's better. Take it easy, King. This case is closed. In just a moment, Sergeant Preston will give you a preview of Monday's adventure. <laughs> For a breakfast treat that makes your appetite wake up and crow with delight, enjoy the cereal shot from guns. The one and only Quaker Puffed Wheat or Quaker Puffed Rice. Just pour out a bowlful, crisp and fresh, right from the big red and blue package. Add milk or cream, top with your favorite fruit, Grab your spoon and dive in. Mmm, mmm, delicious. Remember, this famous wheat or rice shot from guns is never sold in bags or bulk. Always look for the big red and blue package with the smiling Quaker man on the front. That's your guarantee of getting the original crisp, fresh Quaker puffed wheat and Quaker puffed rice. Start tomorrow morning. <laughs> For a Waker Upper breakfast treat, eat Quaker puffed rice or Quaker puffed wheat. Listen Monday when Sergeant Preston and Yukon King meet the challenge of the Yukon in the case Barry Jeffers Trust. When young Barry Jeffers decided to go back to the States to enter the Spanish American War, he didn't expect to run into the enemy in the Yukon Territory. Nor did I think King and I would run into intrigue and murder when we set out to locate Barry. Be sure to hear this exciting adventure Monday. These radio dramas, a feature of the challenge of the Yukon Incorporated, are created and produced by George W. Trendle, directed by Fred Flowerday, and supervised by Charles D. Livingston. The part of Sergeant Preston is played by Paul Sutton. They are brought to you every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at the same time by Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice. The breakfast cereal shot from guns. For a delicious hot breakfast, eat Quaker Oats. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Delicious, nutritious, makes you feel ambitious. The giant of the cereals is Quaker Oats. Say, boys and girls, do you want to be a star someday in sports and activities? Then start on good Quaker Oats breakfast tomorrow. Because nourishing oatmeal gives you more growth and endurance than any other whole grain cereal. Remember, Quaker and Mother's Oats are the same. This is J. Michael wishing you goodbye, good luck, and good health from Quaker Puffed Wheat and Quaker Puffed Rice.